Bonjour tout le monde. Welcome back to We in France. Now, tell me, have you ever been on a vacation somewhere and a foreigner acts in a way that you thought was rude? Or maybe you've actually been the one called out by locals for your seemingly rude behavior. My answer is actually yes to both of these questions at one time or another. And that's just to say that cultural differences are definitely something to be aware of no matter where you travel in the world. And that's exactly what we're gonna get into in today's video. So we're gonna talk about seven American habits and norms that would come across rudely to French people. And please stick around until the end for some context on where I'm coming from with my list. All right, so seven American habits the French find rude. Number one, being superficially friendly and not following through on plans to quote, go for a coffee sometime. Now look, maybe it's not the most socially endearing thing to do, but Americans say things like, hey, we'll have to go for a coffee soon, right? How have you been? And then we never go on to make those actual plans. And I feel like this can be a bit confusing to foreigners who take this friendly suggestion and, you know, cheery disposition, literally. Now, several French people here in France that I know, they've told me that this has happened to them either when conversing with Americans or when they visited the United States. You know, they're still, they're still waiting for that friend to call them because they said a few months ago, hey, we should get together sometime. Let's catch up over coffee or, you know, what have you. And it comes across super rudely to people who are expecting a phone call and plans to be made. Now, I think most Americans mean well. We do, we mean well, we're just being friendly. And casually throwing around ideas for, for future plans is just something people say in the moment, kind of a, a social thing that you just say. And sure, some people do it insincerely, but I'd wager that most people who say things like this and just never make it happen, it's because they get busy, they, they move on to something else in life and they don't make it a priority. But the French person will take it literally because in French culture, if you say something like that, hey, we should get together for coffee, you know, you're going to suggest a date. You mean it. And it's not something you just leave up in the air. So my tip is just if you're a foreigner dealing with Americans, if you've met someone who says something like this and you want to really get together, take the lead. You be the one to open up that contact, to set the concrete plans. And that way you're not left wondering and it's not going to fall through the cracks. All right. Number two, asking silly questions that only reinforce negative stereotypes. It's one thing to be genuinely curious about another culture and ask respectful questions. But it's another thing entirely to say things like, oh, I heard the French eat snails and frogs. How can you eat something so disgusting? Or, you know, are you sure you're French? You're fat. And I actually heard this one in person um, in Paris, a tourist. That's all I'll say. Um, and I almost did a spit take, really. Just no, don't go there. All right, number three, making jokes like you'd all be speaking German if it wasn't for us Americans. And this one is tiring, man. Do you know how many times I've heard an American say some version of this over the past decade or make reference to a white flag, you know, surrender? Too many to count. I see it all the time here in my YouTube comments. Yes, really. And a family member who shall remain nameless, bless his soul, said to Tom, my French husband, years ago, something along those lines. And it's not cool. It's disrespectful. It will not be well received. So stop with those World War II references. You and the person you're talking to, probably had zero personal hand in World War II. And all this does is reinforce French people's ugly American stereotypes. And we don't need any more of that. All right, number four, compliments that lead to asking how much something costs. Now, in some areas of the United States, it's pretty commonplace when out and about for people to compliment others that they don't know. Uh, kind of as a means of making small talk. People even might ask a stranger uh, where they bought something, how much they paid for it. And I do think while it might get under some American skin as well, not everyone responds kindly to that. It can be regional as well. The fact is, is that it happens. But in France, you're really not gonna see that sort of thing. In personal experience, when I'm back in Florida visiting my family, I can remember a few instances in particular of overly friendly Americans asking where I bought something. You know, my dad and I were in Savannah, Georgia, playing tourists and other Southern states on a road trip over the past couple of years. And um, there are always these people that I didn't know who were overly friendly. And that's just showing how much I've adapted to the French way because you almost find it off-putting. And I love the compliment, you know, ask me um, where I got my bracelet. But to ask me how much it costs, I feel like that's stepping over a line a little bit. It's crossing that line. And I think you can be nice and appreciate something you see on someone else, but leave it there. You know, don't, don't go ahead and ask a French person how much their uh, beautiful shoes cost. You know, it could turn a normal situation into an awkward one. 
really fast. And in France, that would be kind of rude, you know, and I've talked at length about small talk. It's more of an art in France. You don't really ask personal questions and go deep with people you don't know at all. There's definitely a line that I've talked about at length between the public and private sphere. So out of respect, don't cross it. All right, number five, making food substitutions at a fancy restaurant. Now, food allergies aside, if you're eating at a high-end French restaurant, maybe one with a Michelin star or two, order your dish without making any substitutions to what you see on the menu. Really, what it comes down to is food substitutions that deviate from how the chef prepared the meal, you know, what you see on the menu. It's done way less in France than in the U.S., so asking for the chef to prepare your meal without one of the key ingredients or spices he or she chose just because you don't care for it is not always appreciated or even possible. And it kind of comes across like this. It's almost as if you're saying, hey, trained French chef, I know better than you. The person who put the time and effort into bringing me this perfect dish with flavors and textures that go together perfectly, I don't respect the food the way you made it. That's what it sounds like. And just to give you a personal example, I didn't think I liked capers, but I went with it one day. And when I tried them as an accent, on this expertly prepared dish in a Michelin starred restaurant, they were the perfect compliment and delicious. And in the US, maybe I would have asked for it without capers, but it turned out to be amazing. And another example that I have is I've seen tourists, heard them actually, asking for their steak well done at a restaurant. It'll remain nameless, you know, fancy one. And the chef personally came out from the kitchen, came to their table to explain how insulting it would be to overcook this beautiful meat. So. That's all to say, that is all to say, just trust the chef. The customer is not always right. And I just want to clarify one thing about what I just said. French chefs are not monsters, but they take pride in their work and they should. And it's best to respect that. So if you're eating at a, a casual restaurant and a pizza comes with an egg on top, which is very common, you can ask for it without the egg, no problem. Or a pizza that comes with olives as a topping, ask for it without the olives. That's not going to be an issue, but I'm talking about restaurants that are more gastronomy focused, and each meal is a creation, kind of an extension of the chef's personality. Don't mess with those ones. All right, number six, starting a conversation without saying bonjour, hello. And this one's always gonna get you in hot water. Yes, even as a tourist, always, always, always say bonjour in France when approaching anyone for anything, no matter how small. So you're gonna wanna say, you know, excuse me and bonjour, definitely before you ask for directions, before you ask someone a question, whether you know them or not. And I talked about this at length, so I'm not gonna rehash it here, but I did a video that I'll put up in the corner somewhere all about saying bonjour in France. So if you're coming here, definitely check that video out. All right, next seven, taking photos of things without asking. Now in busy touristy areas, out in public, it is only normal to take photos of things you see, things that interest you, tourist attractions, whatever, including people. Now, most of the time, you're not gonna have any issues as tourists. Obviously, don't photograph the police or the military, but other than that, you can go nuts, take pics of your, your art attractions, your exhibits, your Eiffel Tower, all that good stuff that you see. But, yes, there's a but, but if you're in a less crowded area on the street, if you're in a store, if you're on private property, even if you're at a public market, right? Even in public, if you wanna take a photo of a person or something they're selling, the polite thing to do is to ask first. And this isn't always the case in the US. So this is an important one, you know, especially if the photo is going to be used or shared commercially, it goes beyond being polite. It's actually the law. So you want to read up on the, the droit à l'image in France. If you're a tourist, you're not going to get arrested or anything like that. But I've been lately scolded for taking a photo of a vendor's paella, actually, you know, like the, the fish and, and rice meal, like in a big pot at a public market in public with people everywhere. I've gone to take a picture of it and I've been scolded. So in France, be aware of the public's right to privacy, act accordingly, be polite and ask first before you take a picture of someone or their things. Okay, and now for some very important context. I try to keep my intro short, but I wanna say a few things. Cultural habits, they're not inherently good or bad, but when we look at them through the lens of our own culture, our own life experiences, I feel like we can perceive them to be good or bad or polite or rude or weird, you know, but they're just differences. And I always come back to that. You know, I think it's really important not to place judgment on these differences, especially if we're living somewhere and we're a guest, we can learn, we can adapt and, and do everything that's necessary to be a good guest in another country and then build on that. I also think it's important that no one tries to be rude. I mean, sure, we could all have a bad day. I've had them. But Americans doing the things I just talked about in France, 
they're not deliberate efforts to be disrespectful. In a lot of cases, people don't know better. So that's what I try to do on my channel and provide knowledge for people. It's kind of like French people who come to visit the US who don't tip at a restaurant. They don't know what the American tipping norms are and it comes across rudely if you stiff the waiter. But yeah, that's just an example of the reverse. I'll have more on the reverse video of what French people do that Americans find rude, you know, just to be balanced and all. I'll do it soon for you. It also goes without saying, that not every American engages in the behavior I just talked about and not every French person is going to find these things rude. I, I just want to be clear about that. But just to sum up, I think education on cultural norms goes a long way. I think it's super interesting to talk about and it absolutely affects how we're perceived abroad in France or elsewhere. So if we can do our part by learning what we can ahead of time and then just being aware of our own biases, our own habits and what we bring to a situation, it's only gonna be a good thing because it's gonna help us to have better interactions with the French. So now I wanna throw it over to you. Tell me what normal American habits would you add to my list of what the French have found rude or what they might find rude, either personal experience or, or just your thoughts on the matter. And for even more tips to help you be even more prepared for your trip to France, I do have an ebook that you'll, you'll wanna check out. It's titled 75 Beginner France Travel Tips for a Standout Trip. It's just a few bucks. And with that, I'm going to leave it right there. I'll see you next time right back here on We in France. Happy holidays to you and your loved ones. Uh, salut.